Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and today we're going to show you how to create a simple logo in Photoshop. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new document and I'm just going to make this 2000 by 2000 pixels. Let's hit OK there. Now I need a company to start with, right? We can't just start creating a logo out of thin air. So I made up a T company in my mind. So we're going to call it Hearth. So hit T for the type tool. Go ahead and click there and I'm going to type in H-E-A-R-T-H, -E hearth. Now let's just pretend that we're just using whatever, Helvetic or something like that. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit larger. Okay, now this is totally okay, but I want something with a little bit more flair to it. And I was kind of thinking with a tea company, it might be fun to include like a little, uh, like a leaf into the logo. Honestly, kind of a rip of Whole Foods, but <laughs> we're going to show you how to do it. So with the leaf coming out of the logo, I wanted it to be more of like a script type font, and this doesn't really lend itself. So here's what we're going to do. I actually want to use Adobe's type kit to find a new font. So we're going to go up to type and we're going to go to more from Adobe fonts. Now I actually have this pulled up right here already. So all you have to do is log into your creative cloud account and you'll be able to pull up this Adobe fonts. Now this is an incredibly great feature because here on the left hand side, you can see there are all kinds of different categories that you can use. Now I would recommend where it says sample text, go ahead and type in the name of your company, your logo or whatever you're going to be making. In this case, I went ahead and typed in hearth already. Now, again, we mentioned I wanted it to kind of have a leaf. So we need something a little bit more script oriented. So here in the top, we're going to go to calligraphic or calligraphic, calligraphy, calligraphic. <laughs> I can't say that. And I'm just going to kind of scroll down until I see something that I like, something that kind of gives me the feeling of like a, you know, tea company and something where I feel like I can pull uh, a leaf design from this. All right, so sometimes it might just take a couple of pages to go through, but there we go. This is the one that I found that I actually kind of like this hearth. I, it's clear enough that I can read it. That's another thing like that is sometimes you stumble upon things like this where it's like, I can't even read that. I don't know what that says. And I, <laughs> that's just really frustrating when it's like, I, there's a logo here, but I don't know what it says. So I just wanted to make sure I chose one that you could actually read. Okay, and this is what looks looks good. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And then all you have to do here is just go ahead and click on this activate icon and it's going to activate it automatically in Photoshop, which is so helpful. So here you can even get a little uh, preview of the quick bound fox and things like that. I think this looks great. So I went ahead and activated it. So here in Photoshop, I now have access to that font and it's called Alicia. So here we're gonna go to the Alicia font. Let's just make it a little bit larger. Whenever I'm working with logos and things like that, I like to make them a bit large. I'm gonna hit Control or Command A to select all and then hit V for my move tool and we're just gonna center that vertically or horizontally. So the font looks great, now I need to add my leaf. Of course we could just draw a leaf if we wanted to, but I actually really like using existing assets and sometimes making some modifications. So we're gonna open up a new website. This is called The Noun Project. Let's go ahead and show you guys here. So The Noun Project is one of my favorite websites for icons and things like that because there's so many different icons that you can choose from and it just kind of gives you a starting point. Even if you don't wind up using whatever is available on this website, it really can help like get your gears turning a little bit. So we're just gonna go type in leaf and then here's a cool one, right? Kind of a, like a double leaf. So we're gonna click on there. Now the nice thing about the Noun Project is that if you sign up to become a member, uh, you can download an SVG and you don't even need to attribute it. In this case, you can see I, I have a paid subscription to this website, but you can actually get this for absolutely free and we'll link all this stuff down below. So you don't have to be a paid member, um, but if you are a free member, then you have to give attribution. So if you're a professional, it makes sense to go ahead and pay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and download this as an SVG. This is basically a vector-based graphic. So just like my type, it's gonna be vector-based. Um, I like this one too. So we're just gonna go ahead and just get a couple of these and see how these look. Now let's go ahead and just go to show in Finder and then I can just pop these up in Finder. I can just click and drag these right into Photoshop. All right, so let's hit enter and hit enter on both of these. And we can see here's both of these uh, leaves and let's just shift click the two of them, hit control or command T and they should scale up nicely because they are vector based. Fantastic. Okay, and now we can just kind of decide like, hey, how do we want to use these different uh, these different logos? Like, 
that kind of looks cool. Let's hit Controller Command T. Um, I want this to be a little bit smaller, so let's go ahead and bring our little control point there, and then we'll just make this a little bit smaller. Now, if you're gonna go adding leaves and stems and things like that to your logo, just wanna make sure that it's legible, right? So what I always do, obviously, if I'm gonna do this for a client, I'm gonna create a bunch of different variations uh, as quick as I can, send them to them, and then have them choose what they like, and we'll continue the refine process from there. So that one actually looks pretty cool. I'm gonna hit Control or Command J, uh, to do a duplicate. Let's just see if I can move this one around. There we go. I'll just move this around. Yeah, it doesn't really work there as well or there. Don't forget, you can always hit Control or Command T, right click, and we'll just go to flip this horizontal. All right, so this is coming off the edge. This is right here. That might work if it gets a little bit smaller. So let's go ahead, hit Control or Command T. I'm gonna bring my control point right here. Let's go ahead and hold Alt or Option and shrink that down. There we go. The goal here is just to make it kind of look like it's coming from the H. Uh, it needs to change its angle a little bit. So let's go ahead and click here and then I'm just gonna change the angle just a little bit there. Okay, and we'll see how that looks. So we have a few different options here. Uh, we have that option, we have this option, and then we just have our little leaf option here. Uh, this leaf, uh, I'm just gonna put on the H, but I kinda wanna make it look like the, um, let me just grab a brush tool to kinda show you guys my goal here. I wanna integrate these two, right? I don't want it to look like just uh, <laughs> willy-nilly. So with the H, it's kinda like comes at a natural curve like this already, and I wanna match that with this leaf, right? So with the leaf itself right now, I'm just gonna make it a little bit less visible. I'm just gonna hit Control or Command T, and then we're just gonna grab our little uh, control point here, which will allow me to rotate it. And then I can just kind of rotate it and move it around until it looks like it's kind of coming off of that edge. There we go. You can see, if it's like this, that doesn't look that natural. Let's just make it look like it's kind of coming off of there. Hit Enter, and that looks good. Now we'll just go ahead and bring up our opacity. And is it legible? Yeah, I think so. Let's just make this leaf a little bit smaller. There we go and there we go, bring it in there. Of course, the integration between the H and the leaf is super important, so you know, I just wanna make sure that it looks, I'm gonna hit Control or Command H to hide that. There we go, and then I can go ahead and just rotate this, just like this, and get it to where it looks good. And hit Enter. So I'm gonna let you guys decide. You can actually download this PSD on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below so you can decide whichever one you wanna do. And obviously you can just create your own fun projects. That's ultimately the goal. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna group these together. So we're just gonna hit Control or Command G to group these togethers, <laughs> togethers. And then we're gonna group these together as well. And I'm gonna call this extra, extra. So here we have our hearth logo, it's together. Now the great thing about this is we have a SVG, which is a vector-based graphic, and I have text, which is also vector-based. So I can scale this infinitely larger or smaller, and I'm not gonna lose resolution, which is really important when creating a logo or a graphic. Now I wanna add a little bit of text or type down underneath here. So I'm gonna hit T for the type tool. We're just gonna click here, and uh, there we go. Sometimes, by the way, if you just click with your type tool, it'll start trying to like, edit the type that you're already making. If you hold shift and click with your type tool, it's gonna allow you to create some new type. All right, so we're just gonna call this T and spice. All right, and I don't really like how uh, this font for, for the lower area. I want something a little bit more formal. So we're gonna go right over here and I'm just gonna give this like a Helvetica new because it's very, you know, it's just like a nice, you know, font that, that works well. Um, I use it all the time. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. There we go. And you can hit Control or Command T to just scale this down if you want to there. Fantastic. I'm gonna make this all caps. I think it's just gonna be a little bit cleaner. Uh, paragraph, let's go ahead and center align this paragraph. And then I just want this to be even smaller. So I'm gonna bring my character window up here and we're gonna make this, there we go. Cool, because I don't really want it to compete. Let's make the spacing between the letters a little bit larger. I don't want this to compete with the logo on the top. Um, so I think that looks good. Here's the deal though. If I make this larger to like fill up, you know, tea and spice, then they start to compete a little bit. So I want this font, this uh, the words down here to be nice and small, uh, but I don't, I don't want it to just like have a blank spot right there. I kind of want to make it 
like more. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just put T and spice and then EST period 2019. There we go. It, I'm recording this in 2021. So I'm not even sure why I wrote 2019 there, but we did. Now I wanna, I wanna go ahead and center it. So I'm gonna use my marquee tool here and just draw a marquee. You can hold the space bar down while you're drawing the marquee tool, by the way. And I'm gonna go ahead and space it. I'm not gonna do it the width of um, including the leaf. I just wanna space it with the main words themselves. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring this up here. Now I have my selection active. I can hit my move tool and I can just center align this. So I don't know if you saw that, but it just center aligned perfectly. I could bottom align it to this selection too. I could top align it, I could middle align it. I can do all kinds of, you know, right, middle, left, all kinds of fun stuff. But now it's middle aligned, so that's perfect. I'm gonna hit just shift as I click and drag right down with my move tool. And there we go, hearth, tea and spice. And then my little test is like, can you still see this far away? I can't, so I'm gonna put this up, up to medium. There we go. There, that looks a little bit better. Let's just bring this a little bit down. I always, when I'm doing logos and things like that, I always wanna make sure like, hey, how does it look up close? And then how does it look like far away? Like driving down the highway, you know, I've, you've probably all seen like a billboard on the highway where it's just got all little letters and there's too much words on there. And you're like, I don't even know what that thing says. You know what I mean? That in my opinion is like, you, you wanna be able to capture them real quick. When it comes to logos, it's usually nice to make things nice and simple. So I would say this thing on the bottom is like a give or take, depending on what you need. It stands alone without it, uh, but sometimes you want that sort of thing. I would like to go ahead and create a couple different like versions of logos that people can use. So let's go ahead and just bring this up here. I'm gonna hit Control or Command J to bring that right down there. We're gonna just get rid of this. And then I'm just gonna take this uh, where it says hearth. I'm just gonna have this just be the H. Okay, so that's just gonna be the H now. And this is gonna be like an icon for the company. And that looks good. Now I wanna go ahead and add a circle behind that. So I'm gonna go over here to our shape tool and we're gonna go to the ellipse tool. So with the ellipse tool, I'm just gonna click and drag, holding shift to make sure I do a circle. Perfect, you can hold space bar down while you're moving this, by the way. And let's go ahead and put a shape there. Now, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and fill this with black for now. I like to create logos in black and white. That way, if they work well in black and white, there's a good chance they can work well in color. Um, but black and white's are just a great place to start. You want a lot of contrast. So let's go ahead and bring this black uh, circle down below the H and down below the leaf. Now the age itself, I have my character panel up here. I'm just gonna change the font color of the age to white. There we go, so there we can see there's the age. So now the age is white, I just need to make the leaf white as well. So what we're gonna do is just double click right here and here in our layer styles, bring that over, we're gonna go down to a color overlay and just go ahead and turn that on and then for the color, I'm just gonna go ahead and choose white and there we have our color overlay. That looks great. Now we have both our little, uh, our leaf and our H, again, taken from that. So it's like, you kind of get the idea. It's like, oh, it's the same thing. I'm gonna group these two together by shift clicking them and hit control or command G to group them together. And then I just wanna make sure they're centered in the uh, circle. I'm gonna move them over here just to see like, we're gonna use automatic centering tools because it's way easier. So first we need to just turn this circle here into a selection. So we're gonna hold control or command and click right here on the thumbnail for that. And as you can see, it just gives us a selection right around the circle. Now we're gonna click on this group, which remember this group is just the H and the leaf. We're gonna hit our move tool up here and then up the very top, we're gonna go ahead and align this center right there. And then we're gonna align this horizontally as well. There we go. And it automatically puts it in the exact center, which is fantastic. And we have our hearth, tea and spices. Again, this would be what I would consider like round one when, I was send it, when I'd send this to a client, if they liked it, we would go from there. Uh, we're gonna do one more little quick variation here. I'm just gonna hit Control or Command J on this. We're gonna just move this down. See for the crop tool, I can actually just extend my background a little bit. There we go, let's just make a solid color background underneath everything. Perfect. And don't forget, you guys can download this PSD. So if you just kinda wanna get in here and poke around and see what we did, uh, just follow the link right down below. So this time I wanna add a little bit of a gradient to this. Now the cool thing about this is I can do this on a layer that's clipped to this, uh, to this entire group. So let's go ahead and check this out. I'm gonna create a new layer right above it. 
And then I'm gonna just grab a elliptical marquee tool. There we go, something like that. And then we're just gonna hit G for the gradient tool. And then I'm gonna do a radial gradient. And then I just wanna choose a nice gradient. So let's just go ahead. We're gonna to go to our greens over here. There we go. And let's just choose this. I'm gonna just click and drag out something like that. Okay, now I'm gonna deselect by hitting Control or Command D. And keep in mind, this is just on a layer that's right above this other layer, regular layers, okay? The first thing we wanna do is I'm gonna change this from normal. We're gonna go down to uh, lighten. There we go. Check that out, lighten. And what that does is it just takes the uh, black and lightens it up and the white stays there, which is really nice. Now, again, I can make a selection around here, G for the gradient tool, and then I can just choose different gradients. I wanna try that one. Just click and drag and we can try this one. You know, you can make this as large or as small as you want it. You can do all kinds of fun stuff. Let's try this one. All right. Boom, hearth, tea, and coffee. We'll go from the center out so you can see all kinds of different effects here. And you can just kind of have fun with this until uh, <laughs> until all the fun in the world disappears. Now, uh, you can have fun with this all day long. That's kind of cool. It's nice and subtle. I like that quite a bit. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna create a new layer right above that. I'm gonna hit M for my marquee tool. Let's just go ahead and make a selection like this, okay? And then I'm gonna inverse my selection. So we're gonna go to select, we're gonna go to inverse. So it's selecting everything but that. And then we're gonna hit G for the gradient tool. I'm just gonna to go to our uh, basics here. There we go. We're just gonna to go to the foreground to transparent. And then I'm just gonna switch my foreground to white. So I'm gonna do something like this, boop, which just gives me, here you can see, that's basically what it would give me, right? But since I'm starting inside of my selection, it's gonna do something like that. If you hit Control or Command H, you can kind of see what it's gonna do. It's gonna give you that little highlight. And that looks pretty good. Now you can always use your move tool and move that up or down if you want. And there you got like a new, you know, fresh looking logo. I'm gonna just kind of lower the opacity of that just a little bit to make it, you know, hey, whatever, we're we're up and we're up to date with our trends. Now I just want to make sure that both of those lay, lay, uh, layers here, the color and that, you can see how easy it was, right, to go from black and white. If it works in black and white, adding some color is pretty easy. We're just gonna shift click those two layers and hit Option Command G. That's gonna clip them to this, and then we're just gonna group them all together. Okay, so that way if I put anything behind this, let's just grab our brush tool and paint. You can see that it's a standalone logo. It totally works on its own. So there we go, relatively quick. Let's hit F for full screen. Again, this would be like phase one. I would send this to the client and see what they think, and then we're gonna do some back and forth from there. Now, the only last thing you need to do is export. I'm gonna be honest with you, Photoshop is great at exporting out like transparent PNGs, so you could just put this on an image or things like that. It's not as good for vector-based exports. For that, you would wanna use Illustrator or Affinity has a tool for that as well. But if you just like need to get something made and you, your client is gonna be fine with a transparent PNG, then Photoshop is totally good. We actually have a pro tutorial available now as part of our subscription. You can follow the link right down below. We go through many different examples, including how to convert a photograph to an icon. Thanks everyone, and I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.